All right, how are you doing? So I've just came out this Romero Dolmen, the antique era dolmens here in, in Spain, southern Spain. I was at the Viera and the Menga Dolmen. These are absolutely mind blown sights to see, especially Menga, you know, one of the biggest in Europe, if, if not the world. I'll just have a wee moment to myself. I'm in the shade because it's boiling. But as I'm sure you know, I love my dolmens. And as I've said always along, I don't think dolmens are a place for the dead. Or were a place for the dead. I don't think they were built. That was their purpose or function. The Menga dolmen, there was, you know, I think over a hundred uh, human remains found at one point. But that could have been long after the, the dolmen was built, you know. And these dolmens are, you know, what do you call them? Passage graves or passage mounds built underneath a, <clears throat> a natural mound with these long passageways. This uh, Romero dolmen I've been in, it's like 25 meters long, the, the passageway with this uh, main space, this chamber, which just felt very like Mace Howe, a wee bit on the Orkney Islands. But for me, the, these are not a place of the dead. These are a place of the living. And that's and actually that's reaffirmed by the way they're pointed towards this, the, you know, sim, simulacrum, but they're pointed to this, uh, the mountainous, the, the La Pena, Lover's Rock, you know, the, the face, the, the rock face, which points up to the sky, looks like a face. It's living. It's the, the earth was a living entity to the ancients. So this, for me, was a place of for the living. Each of them, there's the definitely the acoustic properties. I did ask the lady at Menga if I could use my my wee tuning fork. She did check, but I had to get permission. So maybe I'll try that another time. But there's acoustic properties to these places. So how did the ancients? How did they perceive sound? Something happens. How did they perceive sound? So there's there's sound within the chambers sound also reacts with the landscape with some of these places you go to you go to places like the ring of Brodgar on the orkney islands the staness you know the stones there's sounds that it reacts with the landscape so these people were finely tuned and connected to the land to the landscape to nature and i don't doubt for one second they had a kind of higher state of consciousness and maybe that's not the right way to, to put it but they were definitely far more in tune with both sides of the the brain that there's polar polarity there that you know clearly they had the knowledge in terms of engineering and physics and astronomy in terms of how they built these massive dolmens i mean the, the manga dolmen until you see it you can't really put into perspective it's quite humbling you know one of the cap one of the five capstones but the biggest one's 180 tons which is absolutely mental like 180 tons so this is a gigantic this is a seriously hardcore construction project would they go to all that effort to bury the dead i just don't i just it doesn't sit with me at all you know these are very ancient mysterious sacred places so it's it's natural you know it's it's natural for humanity to want to be near or buried somewhere mysterious and supernatural and, and magical but that doesn't mean to say it was uh initially built as a as a place for the dead so i think it's a place for the living it's a place for healing it's a place for continuing mankind you know, as I've said before, life then was harsh. It was about survival, food, shelter, water. You know, I don't think, I mean, my initial feeling is that dolmens were, you know, a place or a, like storage facilities for kind of food or, or seed or, or grains. They could well have been shelter at some point, but I think it was, it was related to healing and water and with stone circles. I feel they're about healing. They're built up, up above these under this underground water, these sacred hot spots. You know the 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 electromagnetic energy of the earth, the currents, 
the water, this water is probably as old as the planet itself. It's deep, deep underground. And that clean, clean flowing drinking water was rare. You know, it was, it was a scarce commodity. So they wanted to build these monuments above where this, you know, this commodity, where this sacred, again, they probably, they probably thought of water as a kind of sacred living entity. So they built these monuments, these kind of shrines or temples above this water. And that's where the magic is. It's something happened, you know, it created a healing water with the stone circles or something happened with the stones. Again, with the, the stones and the quartz, the, <clears throat> the electrical properties with, with quartz, you know, granite contains, you know, I think it's 10 to 60% quartz. So something was going on there. And so I think with dolmens, again, there's, there's this water or the, these veins running under, underground. And maybe these dolmens were a place of, of, of healing, of, I don't know, initiation or something, something to alter their states of consciousness, consciousness perhaps with a sound element or a kind of place of, of healing for, yeah, but not, not a place of place of the dead. They've gone to extreme efforts to, to build these monuments, like seriously hardcore efforts to, to build them. That Menga dolmen is just, just absolutely, <laughs> Absolutely mind blown, you know, I was like a kid at Christmas in there. These capstones are, are huge, as I said, one's 180 tons. These huge kind of uh, orthostats, so there's like 24 of these orthostats, and it's, and then there's these three huge pillars. Just unbelievable. We're talking like 6,000 years ago. And it's lasted, stood the test of times for 6,000 years. It could well be older than that, to be fair. But that's what archaeologists have, have dated it as. It's kind of 3750 BC, something like that. It's just mental. It's absolutely mind-boggling. But not, not a place of the dead for me. A place of the living. A place for healing. A place of initiation. A place of altered states of consciousness these were they are they're often dolmens are often referred to as, as portals something was going on there some some magic you know i talk about this left brain right brain we definitely need to tap more into that right brain in terms of the creative and the magical thinkers and that's that's what happened this is this is what happened in these places not a place for the dead And this landscape is, it's quite something. It's very hot. And quite mountainous as well. But the fact that the Menga and this Romanal Dolmen faces towards this uh, rock mountainous range, which looks like a face, again, to me, that says they knew that the earth was living. It was a living entity. So these Dolmens for me are uh, an extension of that to continue humanity, as I said, survival, food, shelter, water. It's linked to water. There's deep underground water here. And also the other thing with, me, with dolmens, I feel they're very kind of feminine in nature in terms of the long passageways entering a, a tomb or womb. So there's a, a kind of feminine feeling to, to these dolmens, which is interesting. So yeah, I thought I'd share a, a few thoughts with you there after visiting these these three magical, incredible dolmens. So thank you for thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. All right, nice one. Cheers.